Mabu, hey. Welcome to IMHO. In my homosexual opinion. I'm Darby. And I'm Alexis P. Bubbles. The P today stands for promise. Darby, you promised me that you would always be there for me and you've kept that promise. Did I? Because in this heat wave, you have welcomed me into your home. I have been staying here and it has been lovely. If this was a bed and breakfast, I would fill out that notebook and say, I love it. And so in return, I'd like to make a promise to you. I promise that as soon as I get paid from a gig that I have been waiting to get paid on for upwards of 73 days, I will start doing nails. Don't make a promise you can't keep. No, I will. Of course, I'm so happy that you're making this false promise, but also- No, I'm gonna do it. Are you really? Yeah, I'm promising you. Know, you know, like, listen, you keep saying that it's because your nails need to strengthen. They need it to heal. That, they need it to heal. But look how long them. they are. You could paint them. You can that paint them. That could heal them. Okay, here's, okay, let them. me explain it a little That'll bit probably more. probably healing. Let me explain it a little bit more. Just paint them, put a color on Can I explain it a little bit more? No, 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 keep going. Yeah, sorry. I don't have regular paint. I do right. gel. And then when I do gel Can't color do on there, paint. I don't know how to remove you it properly. So it properly. I rip, wait, I'm, I'm being serious. So I rip it off and it well, goes I've got back to weakening polish. the nail. I'll do it right now. I don't want that. I think it's very brave of you to stand by your nails in this current political climate. Well, I don't have a choice. They they literally go by my side where I'm standing. They do. And it's just the amount of effort you put into your drag is admirable. Min minimal. Oh, sorry. What did I say? Earlier. I'm very, very sorry that your house is hot, but I'm really, I'm having fun with sleepover. I'm having so much fun and we love JB. We love Curtis. Now the semantics of it all. I know, I know I hate getting bogged down in semantics, but you did say that I welcomed you into my home when in actuality, oh. I forgot you had a key. This is but your But once phone. you were there, think, oh my God, thank you. Hello? People Magazine. I'm the most beautiful drag queen. I bust down doors for others. I make it easier for other people to have doors open for them. You want to add it? We would make a door. Let me talk. Hi. What was that? Oh, they didn't say that you bust down doors. They say you enjoy door busters. Do you? I love a deal! <laughs> Sorry, that hurts. That hurts. <laughs> Even though you made it through the door despite my best efforts, <laughs> since you've been here, I've been having a wonderful time. We've been hanging out with her boyfriend. Oh. He makes me feel very young. He makes me feel very young. Yeah, me because too. Because we have the same sense of humor, even though... Listen, I don't mind being 10 years older than your boyfriend. Okay? I'm actually... I don't mind You're that. technically 11 years. I'm 10 years older. But well, I at mind this the 11. age... I mind the 11. I was going to say I didn't mind the 10, but okay, rub it in. I think you yeah, 11 should is mind too it. Much. I, I'm concerned, and I'll tell you why. No, I'm not concerns. minding it. No, 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 I don't no, no. care. Here's my concerns. Here's right, my concerns. Here's my concerns. He's lovely. Mm -hmm. He's a wonderful man. Yeah? I simply adore him. Yeah. That's my concern. Here's my concern is I don't have a concern because <gasps> for my whole life, I didn't oh. think I was worthy of love. And so I'm not going to let a little, little, little thing like age gap within reason stop me from experiencing love. My parents are 12 years apart and they hate each exactly. other Exactly, yeah. No, I'm so happy for you. And I will say, IMHO family, I just want you to know he has been vetted by both me and Curtis and JB. And JB we, is obsessed with him. And we all... Approve. Yeah. I approve of Alexis being loved. And that's something my therapist was really proud to hear. Oh, thank you. But I was okay with it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of loving, I'm loving this season of Drag Race Philippines. Girl, I'm not listing it. <laughs> no. I'm gonna I'm love it. Wait, wait, wait. I have to talk to you since the news. I need to hear how you're doing. Why? Stacy da Stacy London and Clinton, what's his name? What not to wear? They're getting back together. How do what? you feel? What do you mean? They're reuniting after 20 years. They're getting back together. But their show is so problematic. They're doing a new show, and it's going to be, the vibe is going to be, wear whatever you want. What? They're then changing the... what's the point the... of the show? But what do they do? They just go around and they go, you look great. If it's wear whatever you want, you're not going to change anything. I mean, I'm sure it's more like, I love this idea, let's polish it. You know what I mean? So it's still, don't wear what you want. Wear what we think you should wear. I thought you would be more excited that they're no, together. I, listen, I am. I think it's really important when two gay icons come together and they're gay near each other. I yeah. think that's wonderful because you know she's gay now. She has a streak in her hair. Of course she is. That's true. It was problematic TV, but I do want them to be mean to people. Well, back then it was fun. It was a different time. 
Okay. Back then, a form of love was telling your friends like, hey, you're fucking that up. Why don't you help yourself mm -hmm. and switch it up? Now we can't do that. That's why Alexis's life is in shambles. I'm not allowed to comment anymore. Actually, you did comment yesterday and we had a really lovely chat and I'm gonna seek professional help. <laughs> <laughs> You said it so beautifully. You said you've been doing so well, and now you're ready <laughs> to deal with the rest of it. There is so much in your control that you can work on yourself, and you've done that, and I'm so proud. But, but I, I do think the there things... comes a point. I, I do think there comes a point. Yeah. Let me explain your mental health. Okay. <laughs> I do think there comes a point where, like, you need extra help, and that's okay. You can only and that, go. Now you're at this point. It's like those dead bodies on Everest. You can only go so far, and, and then you're you, gonna need to your get, have somebody else uh -huh. get orange boots. What's his name? Green boots? Orange boots? What's his name? Dude died, right? Oh, Boot. well. Boot. Boots. <laughs> but instead of boots down, boots up. And they're like brightly colored. So they, I don't know if they still do it, but they used to use them as a landmark. So they'd be like, oh, thank God we're almost there. There's all green boots. Because it's too dangerous to pull the bodies down from the mountain. <gasps> and now it's like, well, they wanted to be up there. That's my, okay, let's talk about that. You're dead. But their souls aren't still there. I don't believe in souls, but I do believe in... Holes. Speaking of holes, let's go fill our drag race hole that was left by Global All Stars when it gutted us with... A, I, I'm almost there. When it gutted us with their decision making and they're sad. And, and now our drag race with the Philippines. needs to be filled with the Philippines. You are so brilliant. Thank you took you. the words right out of my mouth. Thank you so much. It's Drag Race and Philippines. you need professional help. Thank you. I'm, I'm gonna get it. Oh. I'm gonna get it, gonna, gonna get it. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get it, gonna, gonna, gonna get, get it. it. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get, get it, some I'm Prozac. Gonna get it. I'm gonna, gonna get, get it. it. Yes, let's go to Philippines. We have two episodes to cover this week. Yes, we're going to be really brief with the first one because while it was delightful, we got to get to the Snatch Game. We That's, what, to we're the snatch game. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here, let's be yeah. honest. Okay, so the first episode is Pow Presents Plus. I love it. Three ninety nine a month. <laughs> don't mind if you don't. Worth it. Worthy. Worth it. What made me laugh though is after they come back after the last episode, before they get out of drag, Maxi goes, "Congratulations to us, top ten. <laughs> they, they started with eleven, that. and then when Pal makes the announcement about the main challenge, the Pal Presents Plus, where they have to make their own little short shows, she's like, "You're gonna have a very special guest." And then in, in a move that I thought was very mean. <laughs> Powell goes, want to know your guest? It will not be Versex, I assure you. <laughs> like, she could just put her down. Yeah. Um, so anyway, RIP Versex, you were kind of mean. We find out that, in fact, their guest is going to be Malai. Is it Malai? Remember she Malai? Malai. Malai is how I have it written down. Melai, yeah. Yeah, that's we're going to go with that. Do you know about her? Do you know her past? No. Okay, let me, oh. Let me explain. She was a Big Brother contestant who became really popular because she is so funny. She met her now husband, who was like the bad boy contestant of that house. And people were loving the relationship because she was so kind and cute and funny. And he was like, I'm bad. She won. Oh my God. Immediately became this like famous person who goes on talk shows and shit. And then she married that fucking guy. And now they have a baby. I love that. I loved her so much. I love her. I, I loved her dress. Her. I loved her styles that we get to see in a little bit. And I must say that I got all of that information from, thank you to a patron had recommended that we watch Sisney Pop. And she does all of the references from Drag Race Philippines. So she's oh, yeah. kind of, she she's the Martha everyone. Mama of yeah, the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. She's adorable. Yeah, she's so anyway, beautiful. Everyone go check her out. She's adorable. She's adorable. What did make me laugh about the Pal Presents Plus setup at the very beginning on the bottom row, they had like Jiggly's Netflix and all that kind of shit. And then the little trash can for the computer was labeled Rajo's Trash. <laughs> That's funny. Because he's the one who said, you, trash. you look like trash or whatever. And then he said, when people tell you you look like trash, hold your head up high. And because you're still kind of trashy in his eyes. 
we'll just go through each of their shows and then go through their looks. The looks were 3D fractal extravaganza. No, I Alexis, I'm so sorry. What's a fractal? In frozen fractals all around. It's from Frozen. It's oh, I thought the that was 3D rendering of when icicles would kind of shoot up. <laughs> or down. Um, fractals were created by Frozen, the movie. Fractals are created by Lynn Manuel Miranda for Frozen. Yeah, it's basically what she said when the when the yeah. icicles and they oh, come up. Oh, did you see Frozen three? No, it's not out yet. Up first, we have Bring Him Home or Friend Zone. Oh yeah, Bring Him Home or Friend Zone. Okay, this is John Veliaga and Pop Star yeah. Bench. What I found really fun about this was when the guest would respond whether or not she would take them home or send them to friend zone, which, ugh, haven't we all been there before? I mean, not me, but I'm sure you yeah. have. They have to dance. So if she sends someone to the friend zone, John dances. If she takes someone home, Pop Star dances, or it could have it the other way around. It doesn't matter. That made me laugh. That was so dumb and so silly, but it worked. It worked yeah. really well. I think a big thing that I saw online, a lot of people talking about, was the physical comedy, the physical humor, is very big in the Philippines. It's very much a part of their sense of humor. We'll get to that in the Snatch Game, but also here. It went really well, and she didn't have to work as hard. I'm sorry to the guest, Malai. Malai Mem Memshi. I'm really sorry about her uh, having to work so hard on the show. It seems like she did. But with this one, I thought they did pretty well. Yeah, I thought they did too, and yeah. actually in celebration of this bringing him home or friend zone. I thought we'd play a little round ourselves. Just one. This is a picture of John Valjean. We're gonna bring him home or friend zone. Hang on. Can I ask a friend? Can I phone a friend? Yeah. <clears throat> God, I hear my prayer. He says I'm gonna bring him home. He I says I'm gonna bring him home. I he love it. He says I'm gonna bring him home. Wait, well, you did one. Now I I do one for you. Okay. Okay, okay. The cast of friends. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Hold on. Do you mind if I phone a friend? No my god, please. So no one told you life was gonna be this way. <gasps> Five claps. You know what that means. There's only five friends left. <laughs> Alexis! Whoa. That was... Whoa. That was intense. It was whoa. like someone came into my body and said that. I, you know who I think it was. <laughs> no. No, I don't want to know who you think it was. No, we're done. We're done. Well, Thank you so much for coming to our TED Talk. As much as I'd like to bring him home. <laughs> no, no, no! Jesus already did. <laughs> we're sorry about that. Up next... <laughs> Okay. Oh, so their looks. Oh, so their looks. John Fazliaga. Uh, I loved John's look. Can I say it's an all white look and you could see the black clips when yeah. she turned to the side, which I know is an easy mistake to miss when yeah. you're wearing it, but paint them white, baby. You looked so good. Pop star bench, however. Pop star bench is iconic. Do you remember that? Okay, she hasn't seen this movie, but viewer at home, have you seen Jurassic Park, the first, the original? I don't and believe in dinosaurs. the guy from Seinfeld, which I don't support, but he was the uh, Newman. Oh, Tommy Lee Jones. Newman, and he, it gets in the car, and then there's the lizard, and the lizard goes <laughs> with the big, that's what Popstar Bench was giving. But gay, we both had very strong reactions to it. I loved it. What was your reaction? It looked like she, poked her head through a gay paper plate. No, her reaction in the moment was, oh! Okay, okay, okay. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna say that, but yes, I had a very negative reaction to it. Listen, Bench, I love you. You yeah. are an icon, but ma'am, you are so lucky that there were other teams that did such a bad job at the actual challenge. Yeah. I thought that runway was so bad, it could have pulled her to the bottom. I loved it. Ooh. I would like one, please. Send oh, it to my It house. made me so <laughs> mad. <laughs> You Who's next? Okay. Then we have Purse First. Now this was Tita and Mix Chanel, but she went by Becky. Yeah, does anyone know why? No I, one knows. I'll say I think Tita did a really good job. I think Mix Chanel didn't. 
Mick Chanel, I think, has shown that she has a tendency to get in her head. And she takes everything way too seriously because she's so worried about all the details. Yeah, I think she's got control issues. Yeah, which, like, can't really. That could not be me. Yeah. Um, sit up straight, please. But she's losing the excitement that we had for her because... She's also losing she's this competition. <laughs> she is. She's not doing well. I mean, was it a train wreck? No. But could it have been better? Because yes. Thank God Tita yeah. was there. Tita killed it. Yeah. And she also killed it on the runway. I'm going to go ahead and say, yes. I liked it. It was so pretty I and cool. I loved it. And listen, our Uranus joke, as long as it looks like that, I'll take it. I did, however, think Mix Chanel also killed it on the runway. It might have been one of my favorites. I agree that it was super cool and I liked hearing her explanation but when it first happened I was like why is she on the ground? Is she naked? And then when she like slowly came up I was like oh she's being bug. I don't know that we needed to see bug come to life but did I not like it? Then we had Tudor Boot with Jay Quinn and Yudi Puta. Yudi Puta is a fashion queen, so she was excited about the idea to do fashion. It was a wreck. It, it was, was a absolute mess. Yeah, they spent too much time in the intro. They didn't have enough time for the actual meat and potatoes of the thing, which was the Tudor Boot part. Literally, the they pictures. spent so much time that it had to be the guest to finally say, should we get started? And then they did two looks, and Jay Quinn was like, well, we're out of time. Yeah, I Tough. have to agree with Jiggly when she gives the note later. She's like, don't alert the audience, or especially the guests, that something's wrong. Like, you have to navigate it without showing that you're doing the navigating. I have yet to see what Jay Quinn sees in herself. And mm. I love delusion. Okay, we need it. To be on that show, you have to be delusional. To be in this business. To be to be on earth. Whoa. To exist is to deluge. Is to deluge. And if you deluge a lot, it's kind of funny. If you deluge too much, it's Jay Quinn. And if you do like cool, cool runnings, you definitely have to be deluge because you gotta get down. Because of the environment. And if you ice luge, you get drunk. Make sure to um, wear a condom. Use, uh, uh, what's that alcohol lotion? Lube. Their looks, though. Okay, Jay Quinn, my initial thought was I don't like that I can see them so much of the under. Now, I know that I have previously expressed opinions to the tune of, like, I think cosplay is valid. And I previously expressed and opinions I still, to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy. I still think that. Mm. Helmstever, I agree with the judges that I'd like to see something different from her. Everything's been kind of a costume so far. In the sense that I don't see the originality. I see, like, her take on... Yeah. I mean, the thing is with, with branding, I completely right? understand this is my branding. I don't know how long I'm going to be on the show. So I want every look to really reflect what I do. So I understand the impulse to do everything in that one style, but it is a gamble and you do risk both the judges and the audience getting bored by you. Had that been the first look I had seen from her, despite the little like seeing the undergarments thing, it's really impressive. Mm -hmm. It's really well done. It's just exactly what she keep showing us. And then Yudi Pota, Jesus Christ. I Did see where forget? it was going. I see she where it the was going, but I don't, yeah, it looks like. It yeah. does actually look like she didn't have the bottom of it and she just kind of put a, a little sheet over. Yeah, there must've been something going on, but also the- Her bones fell off. It didn't flatter her body. It didn't. It was a bummer. It was a bummer. Yeah. And the little bang pieces, she wore one of them in the challenge and it's so oh, distinct. and it was cool. So and then she did to see it both here, of them. It's like, uh, we just saw that. Didn't you just wear that? That to me seemed like an easily avoidable error. Then we had 69 for the win with Angel and Kiana. This was a fever dream. This is the one I was most worried about because there was no focus. 69 yeah. for the win was just whatever you want it to be. But I gotta say, they pulled it off. They pulled it off. They were so fun. From my perspective, the talking into the eggplant didn't make a lot of sense to me and it seemed really like fucking weird. But when I saw the guests having fun, I was like, ah, yeah. context clue. This is kind of fun. It is fun. And then when she had to put the eggplant in the <laughs> hole, that's so funny. And if you think about it, the juxtaposition of those serious questions, because they were like, hee hee hee. Who is your inspiration? Who's your biggest inspiration? <laughs> and then they did eggplant hole. Who's your biggest inspiration? Oh, actually, we're almost out of time. Will you put this eggplant in the hole? You have 69 seconds. You have 69 seconds remaining. You know, in the bingo biz, we call 69 dinner for two. 
I'm on a diet. Angel looks absolutely stunning. In angel this gown. was an angel. She looks like a gown. Oh no, sorry, I was wrong. <laughs> oh no, I was sorry, I was wrong. Way. She's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant that was her. <laughs> that was for the next runway. Yes, she looked gorgeous. I loved the gradient of this gown. I loved the hair with it. It's a pretty common fashion. Yeah. You know, like it's the moment. We've seen it, but she looks great. And then I really liked Kiana's look. Yeah. I thought it was so cool the way it moved and how they were like sticking out from. She looked poisonous. Yeah, she looked like one of those poisonous fish down in the bottom. Oh, a gar gar then we have Mother Cooker, and it was Maxi and Zimba. Yeah. I'm gonna say this. This. Is there anything? <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything that Maxi can't do? I'd like to know. Look around for something she can't do. Oh, be different looking. <laughs> that takes real talent. <laughs> <laughs> it takes commitment to the bit, babe. <laughs> No, she's so fucking gorgeous. She's... She's so funny. She's so at ease. I did feel a little for Zimba. She felt a little out of her element. That was a bummer to watch, but God, I could have watched Maxie all day. Yeah. Speaking of watching her, her look, are you Oh, this was my me? favorite look of the night, yeah. It was 3D Cinderella. It was... Exactly what I just said. Everything about it. Although I guess it was lavender, but I don't see all colors. Well, no, it was more of like icy blue, I feel. Oh, I thought she said lavender, but that could have been a mistranslation. Oh, yeah. Wow. Fix your colors. And then Zimba, she said about herself, she was like, I feel like I'm playing second fiddle. As someone who professionally does that, that is my chosen position. First fiddle, second fiddle. It is hard. You have to do a lot more of the work kind of conversationally and you don't get any of the credit. You have to be okay with that. You have to thrive. A lot of plants thrive in the dark, the cool, dry, dark places, but they bloom the most beautiful flowers. So it takes a special kind of person and not everyone can do it. You have to uplift yourself and someone else. Okay, so it's kind of like juggling two personalities. It's just hard and it's okay if it's not your thing. It just means that you're a star and you should be number one. You should be out there. So sorry to interrupt. That sounded yeah. real. But also, do you want to do, you, do, you want to do can I sit back here for this? No, usually the first fiddle makes that decision. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you, can I see back here? <laughs> You said that as a second fiddle, you have to uplift the other person. Yes. It's so, it's thankless. It must be really difficult for you since you can't uplift yourself from a pool. <laughs> the fact that you now have to uplift me, incredible. Can I see you back here? Sure. I was speaking more sort of metaphysically, conversationally, entertainment wise. I tee up the jokes so you can knock them out of the park. Now, our comedy style is that I tee them up and then you just push the tee over right. and you do your own thing. Yes. Okay. Yes, and. It yes, and. Works. Yes. Can I see back here? Yeah. And were you talking metaphorically or physically about the pool thing? Physically? Physically. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I almost slapped in your face. <laughs> I need to work on my empathy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't say if we liked her look. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. She was a heart. I wish it, I could have seen the waist more, but that's fine. I wish She's there had been more girl. blood. She's a beautiful girl. Can we talk about Mama Pow? She looked incredible. I loved the dress. Was this the one hand? Yes. Okay, so this she looked incredible. Raho says, it's all in the details. It's all in the details. And Mama Pow's response was... Same for me. Same for she me. She says that as she lifts a hand with nails on it, and only moments later does she do this with no nails on the other hand. One full hand. It's the details. Nails. One full hand, no nails, and that is why I chose to be no nails today. Because it's like You're representing the duality. I'm representing the duality of. Oh, uh, we how? contain multitudes. We contain multitudes. We contain multitudes. She contains nails, and I contain natural. And I contain loads if it's been our anniversary or if there's been an economic crisis and he needs distraction. Yeah. 
He loves numbers. The winner of this episode is Maxi. And it was I so mean, adorable because she she, she didn't, didn't know quite she hear. She didn't she thought maybe they had moved on and she was like, wait, who? The bottom two are Jay Quinn and Yudi. It was clear that everyone wanted Jay Quinn gone. Did you know I found out after I watched the explanation video that the song that they were lip syncing to was about you don't have to do all the bells and whistles. You don't need to do anything big and crazy. You just need to be yourself which is Yudi's whole thing. And I'm gonna say this with absolutely no information other than what I saw on YouTube. And I think it was a setup to send Jay Quinn home then. I think yeah. they wanted to keep Yudi. I think they wanted to keep Yudi, I think but this was Yudi... one of those moments where they assign the song that is most fitting to the person they wanna keep. And unfortunately, sorry, go for it. You would start saying it. I don't know where I am. Oh, sure. But unfortunately, halfway through it, Yudi was already disappointed. She was having a hard time of it. She was feeling very un misunderstood. And so halfway through the song, she just walks off the stage. Yeah. Now, this is what makes Philippines so exciting. heartfelt and exciting oh. is that when people walk off in the middle of the lip sync, it is always edited as, I'm so pissed they did that. That sucks. They shouldn't have given up and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> I just lip sneezed. <laughs> you contain multitudes. Um, yes, Mama Pal did say, like, never give up. But everyone's like, I really hope that she doesn't regret this in, like, a helpful, like, a sweet like a, way. I, I like, see I why she did it. Decision. She needed to go home. Like, I understand. Yeah. And it's this kind of sorry to keep saying it, but it's this duality that I think makes Philippines so incredible because in that moment, we were able to care for her and worry about her while also being like, oh, that does kind of suck though. Like yeah. she probably should have fought, but also I want her to be okay. You don't get that from other series. You just don't, sorry. We keep selling it like y'all aren't watching it. You're watching it, but tell your friends. You got some friends? Tell your friends. And if that's not enough, let's talk about the next episode. I think that's a great idea, Alexis, because if we start this episode, I'm okay. We start this episode with a little bit of Jay Quinn drama because people <sighs> are over her. Yeah. You could even hear people cheering Yudi on, but I didn't hear a single person cheering Jay Quinn on. Angel kind of gets involved. Actually, first was Kiana, who was like, you said that you didn't feel me. And I gotta say, like early on, you didn't feel me. And I gotta say, I'm not feeling you. Which was so exciting to see because remember Kiana in the first couple episodes when Jay Quinn was being a total cunt to her? Yeah. She just cried and apologized. Being a bully doesn't- It's kind of fun. <clears throat> doesn't what? get you. Oh, sure. Sure. Doesn't get you as far as you think it will. But it does make you cool, you ugly bitch. <laughs> I'm smoking my cigarette. Can I? Can I hear you? You don't want me to what? I don't want you to bully me anymore. You know, I can't hear you. I have um, cancer. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should um, bully you more. <laughs> character development. No, but <laughs> Angel and Jay Quinn really go at each other. I gotta say it was fun to watch. My thing with Jay Quinn from the beginning was she and Versex did the mean girl thing. They tried to be mean girls. Versex actually came around and ended up befriending everyone and people were really sad to see her go. But Jay Quinn never quite Got made on it. on that train. She yeah. just kind of continued being kind of a a dick. Versex and Jay Quinn boarded the bully train. And then Versex realized, I don't want to be on this train. So she got off. She got on the fun train. Okay, to be fair. To and be then fair. Jay Quinn mm. stayed on the bully train thinking, well, this has got to circle back around, right? No, it's going straight to Skokie and they're going to kick you off. Skokie is one of my favorite towns in the Philippines. Do you know one time I went on a train and I went all the way to the end of the in Skokie? I missed when they opened the doors and they closed them again and I didn't know about pulling this and I couldn't get it open. So I went in between the two cars and I just threw my backpack over and like crawled out from in between the two cars. And the guy was like, yo, you can't do that. And I was like, well, now you're here. Where were you when I was stuck in there? What do you mean? What do you mean? Do you remember between the two subway cars or the L? You could open the doors and go in between. It was like a tiny little pathway. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. So the train got to the end of the line. Everyone had gotten off except for me. Why didn't you get off? I don't know. <laughs> what? You got locked on a train, but you don't know how? I think I was asleep. 
Okay, so let's get to the Snatch Game. It's a Snatch Game, you guys. We can't talk about... What are we doing? We do have a very special guest, a young Gen Z internet boy. Excuse me. Named Kyle Icheri. Excuse me. What a hot, hot little YouTube, internet, TikTok, whatever. Very attractive. He's so attractive until they showed the clip of him the getting package famous of him as an actual child. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like... Then it was like, ooh, I didn't like that. Yeah. Didn't love being confronted with no that. No offense to him. No offense to him. No Happy offense to him. him. What an incredible yeah. career to go from the child's voice to guest judge of gay stuff. But it, it was it was jarring as a horny audience member. I didn't like We that. were jarring at the time. We're, we're working on our jams. Yeah. Look out for those in 2025. They're only good until... They're Ferment, they're fermenting. They're mm -hmm. fermenting right now. So mm -hmm. we're just gonna go. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go top to bottom because John tops deserve respect. <laughs> if we can find any. <laughs> Girl, I know that's right. Girl, I know that's right. I did marry sort of one. John Fadeliaga, who was Angel Luxon, uh, an actress. She made me laugh. She made I me will laugh. Say she, she made, made me, me laugh. laugh. Yeah. And I think the impression was pretty spot on from what I understood from the internet. So Absolutely. good for her. Absolutely. Her look, her windblown look <gasps> was the star of the night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It did take me back. Remember when Bernie did yeah, the like. Yeah, Bernie. Oh, I love that beach. Just. John looks. Breathtaking. Stunningly gorgeous. Yeah. I feel like John has come out of her tiny little shell. She was not someone I thought about before watching these two episodes. And now she's in my top. I love yeah. her. Next to her was Maxi. She was Babe Sebalate Drive. She was Bob. Maxi was, she was a ghost. She was the like ghost. this, this Evil ghost special lady. ghost that's on this street. And she's so lonely. She was really funny. And she looked really good. Being lonely is kind of funny. She was really funny. Most of it really was just the physical comedy of it, but it made me laugh. Because whenever they would lose their shit, which happened multiple times, she would just take both sides of her hair and shake it. <laughs> like they were. Oh my God. Yeah, really it was like. Pom -poms. It was so cool. Yeah, it was very funny. Now, her look was not my favorite, but she does look beautiful. She always looks beautiful. I didn't understand the runway prompt as a viewer until I had watched the third or fourth person stand in front of the fan. I thought it was more of a use wire to make it look like your hair is blowing sideways kind of thing. When it said wind blown, I was like, oh, they're Gosh. gonna have to create like a fake. No, they were just supposed to wear like stuff that the wind could blow. Which I didn't is, realize that. That's fun. So with that, it was, I don't know. I didn't like it. I like everything that she does, and that just wasn't for me. What did you think? I'm yeah. sorry. I've seen her in better things. Oh, well, yeah. We we both have. We've been watching the same show. Jay Quinn as Confucius, which was a funny idea, but there wasn't many jokes. The funniest part about it was Kiana's talking head when she did her Rue impression. She goes, you're dressed as Confucius, but you left me feeling... Confused. <laughs> that was the best part that of the whole thing. That was the best part. She looked great, though. I will say. She did look I'm great. I'm not her biggest fan, but I did enjoy her Confucius look. Now, her runway. <sighs> oh, it reminds me of... um. Exactly. No, no, no. What's exactly. the one that everyone always talks about? They laugh because it's like, you think you're going to like a fun show and then it ends up being like a church Shen service. Shenyan. Yes. Is that what she's referencing? I think what she that's accidentally based did. Off of. Yeah, no, this is a traditional Chinese dress. And so she had mentioned that that's her something or other and she used other words as well. But Shenyan is way funnier. You know what? Had she done Shenyan, I would have wanted her to stay. Listen, it's just, it. we've said it before. Jay Quinn's just doing the kind of same stuff over and over. Yeah. So, so I might have skipped the order, but Mick Chanel was up there. She was Rufa May Kinto, who we have seen before. I believe it was Eva, Eva Queen, who Eva. did it very successfully. She did it really well. I didn't think it was... Bummer. I didn't think it was the greatest. I didn't think it was the worst. I think they're holding her to a higher standard just because she... Is Yelled at everyone on the that on That's the her crew. standard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately, it just didn't work out. She's had a really rough few episodes. Yeah. <laughs> out of the four or five. Three of them have been tough. Her look, however, I loved where she was going with it. I really did, because I thought, oh, we're going to get the visual gag. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, when she pulled her long hair out, it never quite caught the wind the way yeah. she wanted it to. And to be fair, it did look like just one box fan at the end of the runway. Yeah, it was a bummer. Well, we got two fans right here. Oh, and we're waving white flags. Like, white fags. <laughs> You can't say that anymore. 
I did the legwork. You did a lot more than just legwork. <laughs> <laughs> Blowjobs. Now let's move on down to Keanu, who was Baron Giesler. He was an actor that had a spot of trouble in the past. Yeah, I think specifically she was referencing his time in Big Brother, Celebrity Big Brother, when he yeah. was kind of on display in the middle, in the time of this mental crisis. Yeah. Now he's doing well, which is fantastic. Now he's doing well. Happy for him. It does feel a little... Okay, remember Brittany's breakdown when she shaved her head and she I'll never forget it. I still don't understand how her hair grew back that fast. It came, it came right out of her head. Isn't that crazy? And we used to laugh. We used to laugh at it. We were really disgusting uh, people. And now we realize like she was, kind she was of in like, a crisis yeah. and it was our fault. With the learning and the growing that we're doing as people, I did have a little bit of a specifically playing a, a time when he was mentally in crisis. I don't know. I'm being very sensitive. I'm being very progressive. She's very, liberal, very sensitive. Liberal tears. Sensitive. I'm going to make a shirt that says, I'm with sensitive. I don't know. I, and then she was really funny thing. and she played off of Angel really well, which yeah. I loved. But yeah, it's just something to, it's just something that occurred to me. Talking about, about, like, mm, I don't know talking about, about Angel. But, well, let's do her look first. Oh, God damn it. Um, you always ruin my best segues by the fact that I'm going too fast. So yeah, you I often forget them. what we do. And that's why I'm second fiddle. I loved it. I loved her runway. Oh, yeah, I loved it. It was she beautiful. So Trend alert, veils. Trend alert, being hot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, I was talking about Kiana. But I love your stripes. Ernie, you're my favorite. We are kind of the burden Ernie of drag. Oh, because I'm tall and I don't have a bottom half. At it's... least as far as y'all know. <laughs> yeah, and I'm short and I don't have a bottom half. Oh. Huh. I'm going to get my nails done. Speaking of Angel, let's go over to oh, Angel, yeah. who was Maria Clara. She was a popular character in a book that was kind of like the epitome of... Like, Trend alert, very demure, very mindful. She was kind of the epitome of like the female, how how women should have been back then. But she was also representative of like what the Philippines were going through as far as like being um, told. Like how they used to think women. <laughs> like how they used to think women should be seen and not heard or whatever. <laughs> That's what they said about the Philippines. <laughs> and when it's someone else that describes I'm... it, it makes better sense. <laughs> but she was supposed to be like... <laughs> Girl, you couldn't get out of that pool. I'm sorry, you were drowning. And I could just watch, all I could do was watch. <laughs> From my understanding. <laughs> she was a character in one of the books. Remember when Maxie did the hero runway and yeah. she was that author who had written a couple very important books that helped with the Philippines revolution and mm -hmm. helped get people excited about it, get people moving for it. This is one of the characters from the book. And yes, yeah. it was representing a pretty outdated version of what's like a proper Filipino woman. Or just a proper woman in those times. Yeah, just... And so she was doing the modern interpretation. I think it was brilliant because it was a book character. She could give it a voice and make it her own. And she definitely did. She turned it into a whore. And that was hilarious. But it was a whore but of her own making. It was a really smart commentary on how women are perceived and specifically women within Filipino culture are perceived. And she was turning it on its head by just being so horny because women yeah. do what? Horn. Well, I was going to say they contain multitudes, and one of those multitudes is horny. I really liked that. I loved it. I loved that it. It was a point of view. More than anyone else, Angel really created the mayhem. <laughs> she did. And she was sitting next to Kiana, who she played really well off of. Yeah. And she continued that, which I thought was great. But my favorite part by far, she gets naked. She gets down to her underwear and she's flirting with the hot guest judge who's never been a child before, by the way. Yeah. He's only been famous as an adult. He responded by pulling his shirt up and showing his nipples, 
beautiful nipples. Perfect size, just one. perfect color. Just one nipple. Just that one nipple. I don't know what the other, the other one could be completely different. Hers are, Mine are. very different. Yeah, nine day. And <laughs> <laughs> he shows the nipple. Everyone loses Goes their minds. Ape shit and, it's and I gotta so say, I in understand character. it. In character. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they were doing. I was trying to give you an example. <laughs> that was so funny. It was so funny. It was so... Everyone was goes so good. ape shit, and it was so wild and crazy, but they went <laughs> ape shit because of man nipple, and I relate to that. <laughs> oh, I loved it. She loves men titties. Mitties. I love a nipple. I suck on them like I think milk's gonna come out. Oh! It doesn't. <laughs> now her look was her oh, namesake Angel. She was all in white. She looked. She so looked absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous, stunningly gorgeous. Absolutely obsessed with her on the runway, flirting with that guy. I just love, and I love her as a blonde. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah, in. Yeah. I'm a little biased. My best friend yeah. is blonde sometimes. So my natural hair is blonde. Mm, that's not the color I would call it. Well, a, prof a professional colorist took my hair, took it to the little book and said, oh, you're actually a really dark blonde. For those of you who were like me, when you were a child, you had this color hair. You had blonde, blonde hair. And then as you got older, you got something called dishwater blonde. Uh. So that on your driver's license, you just put brown. Because if you put blonde, the cop is gonna go, I can't even understand this. And then he'll shoot you. Well, not usually not if you're blonde, you don't get shot. And we need to talk about it. A cab for cutie. A cab. It takes a little bit of your spirit, okay? When you were a blonde child and now you're a dishwater blonde adult, you lose a little bit of luster. Like kids who have blue eyes and then when, by the time they graduate from high school, they have brown eyes like mine. Mine aren't even brown. People ask me what color are mine. I don't know. They used to be blue. Look then they were green. Look at me. And now they're, I don't know. Look, look at me. I'll tell you. So they're like kind of greenish, bluish, grayish. Exactly. On like the outside, and then there's like gold in the middle. Wait, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, mine those babies. Like hazel, you know what I mean? Behind these hazel eyes is a song I never identified Did with until today. Did you see that there is going to be an animated version of the Stephanie Meyer book, It's Twilight, but from his perspective. And it's coming to Netflix soon. And that will be my entire personality. That will be my entire personality. When you talk about TV... I know, it makes you want to not watch TV, but... Well, no, 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 but I think what it is, is it feels like someone describing their dream to me. Well, it's because you value things like YouTube. The thing that we're on, the thing that makes you your living. I would never do YouTube, are you kidding me? You value those kinds of shows, and I love a scripted fantasy, sexy fashion series. That's what I love. That's how I get my joy. And, and before I had a boyfriend, joy and you throw it at us, I share I it, it with you. I share it with you. Okay. Because my whole life up until this point has just been movies and TV. That's all I've had. <laughs> doctor <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> it's not a joke oh it's my truth sorry Ugh. that's so real that's so real did you so see real. kenny ortega's Ally. gonna do a young adult's version of the phantom of the opera kenny ortega's gonna direct he did hocus pocus and okay so see now you're describing another dream to me i need to wake up i did have a really fucked up dream in here the other no night. no stop stop if you tell me your dream i can't remember it anyways <sighs> You know, sometimes your brain works in the right way. But I do have a dream for us. I have a dream that one day we'll be on red carpets and we'll be those people with the microphones that flag down the famous people and mm -mm. say, what are you wearing? And You're... they'll say, Prada. And I'll say, have you ever seen the Meg? And they'll say, I was in it. I'm Jason Statham. I think I'd be really good at the red carpet. I'm sorry. I think we'd be really good at the red carpet, but I'm really bad with names. I would need someone right but next that's to me going, that's Jason Statham. Me, that's me, that's who I am. That's what I'm trying to do. You're saying it's dreams. I'm telling you what's going on in pop culture. But could you pick out a young Gen Z TikTok star? Yes, of course, Noah Beck. <laughs> oh, my bad, <laughs> proven, proven. <laughs> Pop star bench is actually going to go ahead and have to be someone named Sarah Geronimo. Sarah Geronimo she... is the person that pop star is known for impersonating. Oh yeah, that's like her go-to impersonation. Geronimo, Geronimo. So she did have. I thought she had a leg Sorry. up. 
Sorry. Going in. But she had to put it down because her name is Bench and she has to sit on the bench. And she did. There's yeah. so much she could have done with it, but I love that bitch. I was just so happy she was at least safe. Now her look, she pulled a Eureka O'Hara. She did trans flag and I like most of it. I don't like the black with it. Yeah, and the hair is kind of weird. The best part about the trans flag is how bright and pastel -y and beautiful it is. So then to just like suddenly have the black element, I don't know. Not my favorite. Tita Baby, however, when we skipped over her in the in row, the she was the Grim Reaper. There was nothing grim about this performance, okay? She reaped it. She Oh, okay, I'll, I'll cut that You off. can say that. No, no, you say it. No, I want you to have one. I don't want that one. And there was nothing grim about her performance, all right? She had me LOLing so hard I reaped my pants. Yeah, she was so funny. She Truly, was so funny. She. Yeah. I thought she was going to take it all. Had it not been for Angel making everyone lose their shit. Out of everyone, I thought she was the best volleyer. Her back and forth was so natural. Yeah. If someone's line didn't work and it was directed at her, she would figure it out. Like, she just, she impressed the hell she out of me. She was so good. She, she was so fantastic. She made Maxie her secretary, the ghost. She was like, what are you doing here? That's so was funny. So she was just quick. on. She, yeah. If I could snap, that's what I would have She was done. so quick. And then she also just <laughs> slayed on the runway. She was a widder. That revealed a to being a, a slut. A, a whore. Which is famously the will. best type of witter. I loved her hair. I'm obsessed with I loved with her it. makeup. I was telling you this while we were watching it. Yeah. I love her makeup. Her makeup to me is classic and clean. It's easily digestible yeah. in a really satisfying way. These last two episodes have been great episodes for her. Absolutely. And then lastly, Zimba Ding was playing funny model Wilma Doesn't. From what I witnessed on the episode, it didn't go well. And, um... That's how I feel about it. <laughs> I wanted you to try and explain it. She Mama was... Pal said, I was offended by your jokes. My understanding from a few different YouTube videos was that this model has a darker complexion and she was making fun of her hair. She I was making, uh, she was like, she thought she was being funny, but she was coming after like physical attributes of someone. And that's not funny. And I think that's what Mama Pal took umbrage with. As someone who didn't that. fully understand the situation, hearing that from Mama Pal immediately, I was like, okay, great. I've heard all I need to hear. She's in trouble. Like yeah. if she's going to say that, that's got to be some serious shit. And then to have to watch her stand there after she says that, and then everyone else is getting judged. And anytime they'd cut back and I'd see like Zimba, she's kind of fidgeting with her dress or, you know, like she just yeah. was so uncomfortable, which made me uncomfortable, which yeah. is good TV. Now her runway, I thought was fine. Yeah, I thought it was it fine. It didn't look like her hair was running away from her. I was, I wish I could just pull it down just, <laughs> just a little, just a, go. Let me just pull that down. The best part, though, of the judging was not seeing Zimba uncomfortable, but was, in fact, seeing Angel Horny. Angel Horny. Angel <laughs> that gentleman. Playing with Kyle like that was so cute. And he played right back, which made it so much fun. When she said, try and catch me, <laughs> and ran, that was so cute. She's just so unapologetically herself. I'm going to agree with. At all times. Yeah. And it's so entertaining. When Mama Pal said, season three needs you. I hope you can see oh, that now. I'm so happy. 1,000%. She She's incredible. Can you believe that? She was almost gone. I know. But not only is she still here, she won Snatch she Game. She wins Snatch Game. Angel wins. I was so excited. Oh, she I'm getting goosebumps. Slayed. I'm so happy for her. I think she needed this validation because it feels to me, part of me, that she feels as if she's living in her brother's shadow. And so it's so, I'm so happy to see her come so out she of the thinks shadow she, she's, and throw yeah, her badge out. They're not first and second fiddle. They're dueling fiddles. The devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a fiddle duel. Steel. Oh. The bottom two are Jay Quinn and Zimba. They have a lip sync. It was to a RuPaul song, was it not? A really wordy one. Neither of them seemed to know all the words. Well, that's fine, because RuPaul doesn't either. 
I immediately was like, okay, great. Zimba's taking it. She's a dancer. But Jay Quinn was doing a lot of dancing while Zimba was just standing there. And it made me so nervous. And Zimba yeah. was fidgeting with stuff. And then she had kind of clunky prop work. And I was she just really She had spray, worried. but I didn't know what didn't it was. spray didn't make sense to me. And then she had water. And the reason you have a short wig that you pour water on is to shake it all out. She never shook it. I know. And she even kept she the water out of her face. She poured it. Kind of towards the back of her head. Although, when she started to pour the water, the judges went up for it. And I was like, yes. okay, now I feel okay. Because then she did end up spinning and, and splitting. She did and do a jump, a jump. In the biz, we call it... A jump up, jump a up, jump. and get down. I was a little confused if she didn't seem to know all the words why she just stood there and tried to do the words. I just wish she had moved. Zimba's an incredible dancer. If you don't believe me, go on TikTok and she will teach you how to do her dance or she'll show you her doing it with other people and then just her doing it and then her and a different person doing it. And then she'll do it by herself again, just so you have it. And then she'll probably bring in the first guy again and they'll do it again. And then she'll do it in front of a bunch of people. Like they won't participate, but she'll be doing it in that video. And then, oh, there'll be another video of her and like two people doing it. So follow her on TikTok. She does it a lot. Thankfully, because there is a God and her name is Ariana Grande, we say goodbye to Jay Quinn. I gotta be honest, I was over her. Yeah. I know it's a TV show, it's a TV show. They're human beings. However, I didn't like that human being. <laughs> I just did not care for Jay Quinn. We didn't, yeah, I feel like we didn't get to know persona. her. It just yeah. wasn't for me. Yeah. I think it was Angel, I could be wrong, but as she's leaving, someone screamed out, make some wigs for us, which <laughs> I know was like a, a Make kind, some for us, girl. like a kind, like we're still gonna work together, but it did feel kind of like a, well, now that you're not doing it, make some for us. It did make me laugh because laugh. I'm small. And, and you heavy. have, to, you have laugh. to laugh. That was another episode of Drag Race Philippines. Thank you so much everyone for watching. If you want to see more of this shit and other shit and all the shit, you can hit subscribe and of course the pitch up is the notification bell. And you can also join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Oh my show. God, we're on Cameo. You can also get a Shamio, which is from both of us at imhotheshow.com. Ah, mm. And we'll all emerge as drag commercial. Merch. Merch. Um, Goodbye. Okay, go ahead. What do you mean? Well, it's credits chat. I do want to hear about your dreams. Go ahead. I don't remember my dreams. Oh. Um, but they are intense. <laughs> I sleep intense a lot. Do you want him to play more friend zone to bring him home? Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. Here. We can just say names. This is our version of bring him home or friend zone. Okay. Give him a bone or send him to the friend zone. Fuck him in the ass or, or send him to the friend zone. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk Cameron then. Growing pains. When he was playing a teenage high school student. Yeah, but we were children. Oh, Kirk Cameron before I knew what was inside of his dark, dark heart. I'm fucking him in the ass. Yeah. I'm fucking Kirk Cameron in the ass. Kirk Cameron now. Well, he's fucking all of us, let's be honest. I'm really concerned about the Cameron family. Those children. I went to school with a guy named Cameron. We were never really friends. He was very sporty, but we never had any, like, he wasn't a bully towards me. We just weren't really in the same vibes. And then one time we had a science class together and he's the one, one time in my whole existence with him. He goes, feel my quad. And he like hiked his short oh, up yeah. and he showed me his big thick leg muscles. And he was in basketball and I was like, oh no, I'm good. And he was like, no, look at it. I was like, this is weird. And also probably a trap, but it was good. That's hot. I appreciated it. Give me a friend zone or, or do the bone. Ernest Borgnine. Uh huh. <laughs> then. Okay. Like Poseidon Adventure, Ernest Borgnine. I absolutely know who that is, but let me just double check. Oh! Poseidon Adventure. Friend Zone. Mm. Listen, there's something about him. I love a man with plenty of space for my feelings and also for your toothbrush. I like that he probably lost a couple in there. Ernest Borgnine now, I like my friends to not talk a lot. And since he's dead, I would friend zone him. Okay, friend zone or do the bone? Ernest from Ernest Scared Stupid. I'm fucking Bone. earnest. Yeah. I'm fucking earnest. We're Listen, fucking earnest. We're white, fucking earnest, stupid. <laughs> a white trash man with spindly muscles that has definitely that seen has a little bit of meth. Love in his heart. 
and is, and smokes will smoke in your face as you blow him. I don't think There's he a time ever and got a place. it. He was pretty There's a time and chill a place. his whole life. I don't think he ever got into any of that. Any what? Smoking or drugs or bad stuff. <clears throat> I just <laughs> I need to clarify. You don't think that Ernest, the guy who talked like this, you don't think he ever smoked a cigarette? You said meth. I'm yeah, sure meth, he then smoked I said cigarettes. Smoke. You said he, he's never smoked. That's what I thought well, you were I meant, I, thought, I thought you meant me. Oh, he's I thought you meant most, he was mad. Because like, when he died, everyone was like, oh yeah, he was really unproblematic. Thank God. I hope we never find the skeletons in his closet or whatever. I was looking in his closet. Well, I will. After Dorian Corey, I don't look in anyone's closets anymore. I'm not supposed to know what's in there. That's the only place I'm not I supposed I to know what's in there. What about, oh, I'm very, I don't know. Okay. John Malkovich. Ooh, now? John Malkovich in being John Malkovich. Friend zone. I'm going to say fuck. You yeah. But you, I'm gonna, well, you like him. Um, well, yeah. no no no. I'm not physically attracted to him. However, he's really weird and I already have one of those as a friend. I couldn't take that on. I personally so couldn't take that on. So you would have to on. fuck him and I'd have to free. fuck him. Yeah. Okay, okay. Cuz when people fuck me, they don't want to talk anymore. But Curtis want, married you. We don't talk. Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> Listen, I'm happy for him. Do I have to pick? <laughs> Listen, yeah. Of course I would fuck him. Okay? We grew up, we were at the time, we were at the birth of Ryan Seacrest. Okay? When he had highlights and fake tan, that, that was porn. We would look at porn. We say, do they have highlights? Well, I can't take him seriously. Yes, I would fuck that man. I would fuck that man. Yeah. How about you? Sure. <laughs> this has been Bonum or Phonum. And if you enjoyed this, we'll we'll bone you next week. Goodbye. Hey, Mr. Seacrest.